you've made a nominal notional gesture toward being safer, but because it's not on you and you're not trained and you're not really carrying it on your person, it's a false sense of security. And that's what I want to avoid. I want to get your gun out of the drawer and onto your body. What's happening, my friends? John Level Warrior Poet Society, and I'm here to help you guys who are newer to concealed carry. I want to give you the advice that I didn't get and really would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of frustration, and a lot of money. So that's the purpose of this video because it may be that you went out and you, you felt unsafe and you got a gun. And then you're kind of like, all right, now what? Maybe you went so far as you got a holster, and I'll tell you, Maybe you don't even realize it yet, but whatever holster you kind of got as an afterthought at checkout at the gun store, you saw I'm like, hey, what should I get? Maybe that, it's trash. You're gonna have a graveyard, a big box full of wasted money purchases and these awful, awful holsters. And I don't mean to, to throw your terrible purchase under the bus, but you made a terrible purchase and it deserves to get thrown under a bus. <laughs> A lot of times we just don't know what we don't know. So people buy a gun and maybe it's the right one. Maybe, maybe it isn't so good. Maybe they get a holster. They go out to the range, they shoot a little bit. Maybe they get frustrated, but it goes in a drawer or a glove box or a purse and it doesn't really see the light of day until the next time you get motivated or you see a, a bad news headline that makes you feel unsafe and then you go at it. But really you've made a nominal notional gesture toward being safer but because it's not on you and you're not trained and you're not really carrying it on your person, it's a false sense of security. And that's what I want to avoid. I want to get your gun out of the drawer and onto your body. And so that's the purpose of this video. Maybe you don't even know about the universal firearm safety rules, which is a really, really big deal. You should know what the four universal firearm safety rules are. If you don't, check down below in this video description and make a note that you'll watch that video immediately. It's incredibly, incredibly important that you do. So in that spirit, in that vein, what I want to do is I want to give you the advice that I didn't get but would have absolutely have saved me. So here it is. Step one is you start with online training. That's just the world. You found me online, so maybe doing a little bit more online training. So congratulations. Give yourself a homeschool high five because you're already doing it. You're doing it. Now I just want you to do a little bit more. Do some online training. Once you do enough of that, maybe you start to get an idea of like, all right, I, I think that this type of gun would be right for me. I just did a video on this. Make sure you check down below this video in the link to check out selecting the right firearm for you. So online training, now you get a gun and then you maybe get a holster to go with it. At this point, you've done some learning, you've done some shopping. Now I'd like you to start wearing it on your body a little bit just to get used to it. Now, some folks won't feel safe or comfortable with this. And so what I'd say is, hey, maybe if you carry it even unloaded, some of my peers are just gonna freak out. It's like, no, I'm like, not forever just to get you kind of more comfortable with it. You get a good holster and you start carrying it around. First few days, you just feel like a ninja. You're just walking around like, I am armed. Everyone, can everyone see? Can, can everyone tell? Am I walking different? Am I powerful? You'll feel different and weird, maybe unsafe a little bit, but you're doing that in a real safe way to carry without around in the actual chamber of the gun. Now, what's good to start with just to get that base level of comfort and figure out how you should be carrying it and what, what, what works for you. What's okay in the beginning isn't okay to keep going. My goal is for you to be immediately ready to defend life. And in that condition, I think it's a mistake to keep going that way. But already you're walking around without a gun on you. So having a gun without a, a round in the chamber, it's not much different, except you could draw, rack the slide, and then be ready to work. Now, after you've carried it a little bit, you've validated your purchases, and you're like, hey, you know, I like this gun. I, I like this holster. And guess what? I can carry on my body comfortably and concealed, and it's not such a big deal. I know what the universal firearm safety rules are, and I'm living by them already. Now it's time to really start doing some more training. Now you can up the ante with your learning and your online training. You could go to somebody like us. This is a shameless plug, and some of you will just 
render your garments on the internet of like, how dare you plug your own class? I have a full pistol one and pistol two and pistol three class on our streaming service and app. I'm promoting it because I think it is the best online training you can possibly get. That's why we made it. It really is extremely good. And I think that you should go join our WPSN app. Watch WPSN.com. Watch it. Now, we're not the only game in town. There's other places where that you can do that learning. So if you want to go elsewhere, do it. But I really think that you should do that online training. There's so many good tools available. Now that I've said that, I'll also add as a nice caveat emptor, there's no substitute for actual in-person physical training. Maybe you do some online training with us, watch our class. Now it's time to get out on the range and start trying some stuff. Start shooting and putting rounds through paper. Now, some folks would immediately say of like, no, 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 get a gun and immediately hit the range. And you can do it that way. But the problem is from the moment you first interact with a gun and you grip it and you shoot it, you are paving neurological pathways in your conscious and subconscious that are extremely hard habits to break should they be bad ones. And I guarantee you, a lot of them are bad habits. That means later an instructor is going to have to fix you and it would be better for someone like me to get a blank slate than have to undo a bunch of stuff that you were doing on your own that you didn't even realize was a bad thing. There's untold amounts of training scars that I have when students come to Warrior Poet Society for in-person training that we have to undo. And a lot of times people have been shooting for a very long time it's incredibly hard to get them better because I have to like demo foundational work that they had done before. It's like I can't build a skyscraper on that foundation. It won't support it. I got to demo it, refix it, and now I build on. It would be better if you just didn't do it in the first place. So I encourage you to just get out of the range and start shooting with some of the stuff that you've learned online. In my experience, women particularly who are a little bit reticent to go to a range that's already an intimidating thing, Indoor ranges with all the gunfire, that can be a pretty crappy experience. It's loud, it's scary, bang, 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 happening everywhere. So I really like outdoor ranges for the gals. If you can find anybody who has some farmland, something with, you know, where you can shoot, that's a much better experience. I highly encourage you to do that. Now, depending on your level of online training and your comfort and, and, and shooting, uh, you want to do enough work there uh, but you don't want to wait too long before you actually get in a formal class. What a formal class can do, what I can do for you is in a few minutes, get you better than you would get in years on your own. Now that seems like a hard sell, like really, that sounds arrogant. I'm like, you can take it arrogant if you want, but it's true. I validated it over and over and over. I will save you thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition. Now, I'm not just self-aggrandizing of like, this is a big commercial for your own stuff. Hey, troll off, man. There's a lot of great trainers out there. There's some that are in your local area, perhaps. Some will be really bad, some will be really good, and then you got a lot in between. But if you want in-person instruction, I say go do that. That's fantastic. There's lots of other of my peers that have good training as well. So go train with them. Snub your nose at me and say, I don't want to train with you. Like, great, here's the information for free. Go train with them, but go get training because it's really, really helpful you got to do it to be like, oh, he was right. I'm like, of course I'm right. This is my profession. We do training. We're good at it. And we care about you. And we want you to be able to cover down as good warrior poets, protecting life, holding the line so that if something bad happened in your area, you don't have notional check the block security. You're actually able to defend life. You're a good protector, a force for good in a broken world. I like that. And that's my big goal of I want you trained up and ready. So for instance, some things I wish I had known, I wish I'd known that I needed a form fit, kind of like Kydex holster that protected the trigger guard. Some of my earliest holsters were downright unsafe and something terrible could have happened to me. Another thing I didn't know is I didn't know to, how to actually grip a pistol, but I gripped it some old way and that had to be fixed. I was never going to get extremely fast and accurate with that old school grip. Another thing I didn't know is the main reason I was missing was shot anticipation and I didn't know how to fix that. My rounds would go down and left and I kept looking at the gun like this stupid piece of metal crap. I got a bad gun and my sights are off and my sights and gun were just fine. This guy sucked and I didn't know. I just didn't know. Uh, and uh, I needed to get training. And once I had training, it all of a sudden unlocked this wonderful video game cheat, sh cheat code, you know? Uh, quick, right now, Contra, what was the cheat code to Infinity God Mode? Put it down below in the comments. Uh, let's see who gets it out there first. Now, quit distracting me, guys. Back to the video. So here we have in review, do a little online learning. 
go shopping, have fun. Carry around just a little bit so that you feel a bit comfortable and make sure you've checked out the universal firearm safety rules to do. If you feel uncomfortable, you can carry unloaded for a very limited time. Then you can get to the range, you start shooting a little bit, make sure you're comfortable and observing the universal firearm safety rules as well. And then I want you to get some formal instruction. Once you do all that, you know how to train and you can be off the races so that you can get really, really good on your own. But this is the shortest and I believe the most efficient and less expensive path to being a really, really good protector and defender. You can disagree, you'll just be horribly wrong. You know, the, the people who know me will be like, oh, he's kidding. But there's some trolls out there that are just like, ah! Some guy said, but it's my constitutional <laughs> right to just carry it. Yeah, you can do that. I'm freedom. Yeah, <laughs> do whatever you want. But I'm trying to give you some good advice. If you disagree, party on. But I do appreciate you checking out this video. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, toggle notifications bell to all and like and share and you know, all, all the normal stuff for YouTube guys, right? Uh, train hard, train smart, stay free. The only way to get good at gunfighting is to do gunfighting. There's no other way around it. You can practice draw strokes ad nauseum. You can get really good at fundamentals and emergency reloads. Maybe even run around a flat range shooting at some steel targets. But there is no substitute for force on force training. What we do in Pistol 3, aside from teaching some really important skills, some combative elements, a little bit of tactics bringing in, is we allow students to revel in the chaos and the confusion, the adrenaline of a real force-on-force -force encounter.